Good morning YouTube. Right, so today we're going to be reviewing all this motorcycle armor here. Mostly brands by Reacher, but we've got a couple of other bits and bobs. So we'll just try and rattle through this quickly. I've had this skier for about four years or so now. So first up is Reacher's very own motorcycle trousers. I don't know quite what the actual model name of them are. So let's have a wee look in the inside label, see if there's any luck. No, I don't think there is. The usual load of small print. Thermal lining inside it, which has been very good. Nice thermal lining in it, very cosy, and a lot nicer feel than the actual fabric inside. Although it does use the bottom push studs to connect into the bottom, which gets all twisted and finickety and not very easy to do. And after four years, that's the hoop and stud on the other side. So every winter, summer, I take them out. I'm Paint them out at the peak of summer. Usually it doesn't get too warm here. Yep, they're all still intact. I thought one of them had broken off, but evidently not. So liners are all still well and attached, so that's all good. The feels of all that quality and the stitches seem to have all held up after about four years, so that's good. Some extendable panel features, which I think are mostly just for looks, and they don't seem to do a right lot. Armour in the knees. Kind of basic Chinese made, it's meant to be the soft type, not pliable, bendy armour. But the reality is, it's actually quite unyielding. It's, it's just quite hard on your knees, I find, like, if you go for a long ride. It doesn't sort of mould and bend to me, so you still want to be a fairly rigidish shape. And it's quite a pressure to put back onto your knees. Again, with all this fabric, it's thinner a bit here behind the knees. They've tried, they've made their effects, but it's just grunts up and it starts to sort of bite into the back of your popular tail you know, vein behind the knee. So, not the most comfiest, but it's there, it's good. There's also a pocket down here, which I've installed a level 2 hip protector. It's a little low seated, it's a little bit lower than I would like it to be. And also, crucially, it didn't come with the trousers, I had to buy it myself. An awful lot of motorcycle trousers do not come with hip armour, which is something I think is absolutely essential. You know, fractured neck of femurs are very common, they should come with hip armour. So I had to install that myself and it sits a little bit lower down in the jeans than I did like but it's an extra reassurance. Um, I think the ones in there are held ones, big long, big long green ones and quite reassuring level two. So that's good. Uh, hip around the waist has been very snug, uh, very tight fit. This is size small and it is small. But that's good, that helps squeeze your pelvis together. Um, so always important in the event of fluid loss inside the pelvic cavity. We pocket in here, barely gets used because of course if you bent over the back, it gets all scratched up. But nice to have I suppose. All the zippers and poppers are still working fine. But overall, all is well. Two major flaws though. One is, you can't really fault them for this, I hear all jeans have this issue, is you ride on along, it's wet, you're going to get a soggy crotch. It happens, there's nothing to do. It's just simply not waterproof around the crotch. And that's a universal feature I hear. There's really not much one can do about that. So be prepared to look like you piss your pants everywhere you turn up. Other feature, this mess. This zip was meant to stitch onto that jacket, we'll talk more about that later. The suppliers get gear and said, yes, this is compatible with that jacket, but that's not the point, it clearly isn't. So, what was interesting, was included with the packaging with the jeans, was another zip as well, which does compatibly fit with the jacket, but of course, you've had to try and stitch that on ourselves, and it's just simply not good a quality of home job. Um, so that doesn't really stop work anymore, so big marks down on that. So, why do you need a zipper on the back? Well, if you're wearing a jacket, you zip it onto the back of the jacket. Right here. And that, if you're in a slide down the road, stops your back, back of the jacket from riding up and getting road rash up your back which would be great if they provided them with compatible zippers. So, big marks lost there. 
So onto the jacket, big touring reacher jacket. Uh, again, meant to be waterproof and it comes in a lot of high res and reflectivity. Your personal taste may vary on the matter. Um, you know, little adjustment trims there if you're larger and around the waist. I've never really much touched them. Again, fits generally been fairly good for the slim person. Better brand of armor in there. We've got D3O, so it's more, more flexible in the elbow joint but still good when it comes to it uh, armband for adjustment again good if you're quite slim and again full length zipper with flap which by and large tends to do a job but it has become a, another weak point for water resistance and it all comes down your front Inside another very very cosy thermal lining. I actually really like this But come the peak of the summer months when you take it out you lose the inside pockets You just got this bare material inside you don't get this little phone pocket or this wallet pocket very handy that So a bit of a lost mark that there's no inside pockets if you take the thermal lining out But I'm pretty much near enough always ride with it in due to where I live quite a cool climate Another weak point is this back armour. Again, D3O, bendy, very good quality. Good stuff, level 2, highest level protection, I think. Is it level 2? I'm not sure. Mm. You can see the markings there, it's meant to be approved for motorcycle use. And I'm not really too sure what any of it all means. I think it's a one actually. Oh dear, that's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Hmm. But nonetheless, I'm quite satisfied that this back armor, though, it's very slender. Very slender. It's so much obliquely miss anywhere on your back. And it's just going to just shove off around in the side immediately and then pop out. So it's going to avoid landing on something so skinny. So, uh, could be a wider piece of back armour, which just feels like a thin strip running down your spine. But it's comfortable, and it does the trick. And I'm actually really recommended this. One of the really nice touches I like is just this soft feel around the cuffs. It's really, really nice. So, four years. I'm quite happy with it. And hopefully it'll last me for another four years yet. So, bonus round. This is quite new actually, gifted to me. This is Helite Turtle Technology, a Helite airbag vest. So, just scream, I am a Hiver's uncle, I am interested in safety, I will drive everywhere at 35 miles an hour. So much for motorcycling thrills, eh, you know? But it was gifted to me and it is good quality. So, just to go over how it all works, we have a wee canister in here. There we go, wee canister, CR2 I think. Interchangeable should you ever have to use it. And that just lives there nice and safely. So, you essentially have a wee seat belt, a wee tether. Uh, I've got mine underneath the saddle of the motorcycle. And you just clip the normal buckle and should you have a, a massive off, that little ball comes out, CO2 is released, and the whole thing poof, puffs up like you're the Michelin man, in theory. I've never had to use it. It sits quite loose on me. I know it's a large, but it's meant to be for, you know, people with a back of uh, 180, you know, height of 180, which is about me, 180 centimetres. Uh, yes, it says that 170, 185, which is my height, but it's quite baggy um, around the waist so hopefully when it puffs up it provides quite a bit of uh, protection um, fills up that gap it's got three buckles closing around it I've got them all as tight as I can there's not much adjustability you can see some adjustability there but I've got them as tight as they go and it's still not snug so hopefully something better than nothing big air bladders all that but another amazing feature is it's got this huge Solid, absolutely rock solid, you know, nothing's going to come through that. This massive level 2, this is definitely level 2 back protector in here. I mean, you can have a horse kick you in the back and you wouldn't feel it. It's absolutely amazing. So, even if you forget 
to put this tether on, which happens quite a lot, and you're just simply not used to the prospect of putting a seatbelt on when you mount a motorcycle. You've still got this awesome level of back armour, so well done to Helite for that. Downside is, I think it's something like £600. Very expensive. But, quality. Absolutely quality. And, you know, had it not been gifted to me, I would certainly have been considering it. Anyway, so, top marks for that, maybe slight fit issue. Gloves! Yes, I picked up for about £30 in um, a bargain bin. Uh, ways, these, you know, usual argument. Sorry for the camera quality though. So that has a little bit of plastic around the wrist which probably does bugger all. It's quite a tight fit this small. Um, it seems a double stitch you can see. Excellent to see that and the scaphoid protection. So if you come down that's exactly where you're going to be landing on the palm of your hand. Very few gloves have this scaphoid protection, so it's brilliant to see that. So this is really good for gloves, big fat knuckle armour, leather construction throughout, double stitching, under under this Velcro seal, which is a lot more secure, I find, very secure. It's been so snug, in fact, you can almost overdo it and end up with numb hand, numb blood supply, cold neck. So just watch sure you don't overdo it. But it's not going to come off. It's brilliant. However, I say the seams are good, but the fingertip worn through. You can see my finger poking through there, which is just not safe. And of course, it gets freezing cold. So, enter the new contender. Back to Reese again. This one's got Gore-Tex, big clumpy thing. And despite being a tall gentleman, I find that I've had to wear the ladies' fit. This one is a right clumpy thing. It's meant to be a winter glove. Um, I've not found it too much in the way of using the control there. It's got slightly softer armour on the back of the hand, but it doesn't feel like it. So if you whack your hand, back of your hand as you tumble down the road, that's absolutely fine. A little bit of padding on the side, on the side of the hand, but no scaphoid protection, which is a shame, but it's really rare if you ever come across anything that does. I find that on throttle, you know, you end up forming a bit of a crease in your glove and you're resting your hand on the throttle on that crease. But hopefully that will bed in because this is still quite new yet. And I've yet to really assess its waterproofness. That was pure leather, so that did eventually just get clogged up with saturated with water. I've got a feeling that this will be drier, but it will get very heavy as well. So we'll see how it goes. There's no shortage of rain around these parts. So we'll see how that goes. So, so far looking good, a bit clumpy, but to be expected. Helmet, most important bit of course. Uh, so I've got, it's a bit of a no-name brand, this Viper helmets. I don't even think they exist anymore. Um, but they did have um, this subjected to the sharp government helmet crash test. And they store scored a four stars and that I know there's a lot of contention on your opinion and about them you know higher brands doing rubbish shit brands doing very well um take off it what you will but I I think they're worth listening to you know if somebody's whacked a helmet a rock and said oh this one's done better than that one you know it's an opinion to take on board doesn't it so this got four stars so I'm I'm willing to take that into account into my decision now I know there's an awful lot of fluorescent high-vis going around here, but I do think that's a colour scheme worth going for with helmets. It's right at the top, it sticks out as you're going around the roundabout and you see this big fluorescent blob wobbling around. Hopefully it'll make you stand out a little bit more. You know, if they're not looking, they're not looking, you can't help that. But if they are looking, I'll help you stand out a bit more. So I do advise the right colour schemes, you know, make up that what you will. Disagree with me if you will. It does have a sun visor. Pretty crap. Seems to warp and wobble your vision quite a bit. Um, and it doesn't really effectively tint. I don't think it's UV tinted or anything. I think that exists just for the looks of it. So I would not recommend it. Comfy enough. I don't know about noise. It's kind of average. Ventilation is also pretty non-existent. I think these are just purely for looks. Um, but this is coming up to the end of its lifespan really I think now um, and I've been quite happy with it now of course one last feature is of course boots 
former boots, not a brand I've ever heard of, but I think they were a posh Italian brand or something. They are CE2 approved, yep, actual proper CE approval, which isn't really often that you see on motorcycle boots. It's quite a short one, but it comes up to your lower third of the calf, I would say. Quite nice. This is not going to deform your foot in the slightest. That's absolutely rigid. Four years I've had that, and it's still not any any less pliant to sole. Absolutely marvellous sole. Rock solid, oil resistant water. Absolutely good. Not coming off in the slightest. However, your ankle, no protection at all. If your car, if a car comes and decides to take your ankle off, that's happening. No protection there at all. No shank around the ankle. Anything. It's just your foot. Absolutely rock solid. Ankle worthless. Dead. So, with that in mind, it's also good quality construction from the double stick and it's waterproof. That is an absolutely essential thing. I've had it for four years. I found it to be pretty darn waterproof until. Dun dun da! One hot day, my feet swelled up, put the boot on. And look at this, the lining inside a top brand former boot just comes out. So I have to be quite careful when putting this on. I have to delicately hold on to the inside liner and thread my foot in. The insole is also slipping up. So quality has gone downhill on the inside, even if the exterior remains excellent. The inside lining has proven itself to come to pieces quite a bit that is where you will get water ingress higher up on the zip but overall good quality quite satisfied with it but in the future if I move on to another beat I'll probably get something longer with more ankle protection and I would make sure that the quality of the inside lining doesn't deteriorate like this one has people one last thing I would recommend, cheap snood. I don't have a neck brace, but it's a bit of a no-brand snood again, thermal layer. Please keep the chill off your neck. And I found it really, really can saturate quite a lot of water into it, which is quite amazing, actually. So, review of Reacher, Helite, Viper, Vase, more Reacher, Reacher, however it's pronounced, fucking Belgians. And hopefully that's been of some use in your thoughts of what motorcycle equipment to buy. Hope that helps and I will post more of this stuff later if anybody's interested. Keep the questions coming. Ta-ra.